Today's podcast, I'd like to talk about transformers. So essentially, let me start by telling you how you build a transformer. Essentially, you wind some coil, wrap it around typically some kind of magnetic material, and on the other side, you wrap some other coil. And so the two coils, one's called the primary, that's the place where you put your input signal, and one called the secondary, that's typically where you hang your circuit or your, the part that the load that you're going to attach to the circuit. So what's the basic physics? Essentially you have an oscillating magnetic field you put on the pro or oscillating current that you put in the primary. That oscillating current produces an oscillating magnetic field. Because these two coils are attached by this magnetic material, the flux of the first coil on the left, the primary, is, goes through the secondary coil on the right. And so that changing magnetic flux on the right produces an ENF, an EMF. Okay, so with that basic physics, we have a way that we can put in some signal on the, in the primary, and we get that similar signal on the right. We'll say more about that in a moment, but that's the basic physics. And so the two things we want to walk away from that is, first, transformers only work with AC signals. If you put a DC signal in here, you won't have a changing magnetic field, you won't have a changing magnetic flux, and you won't produce an EMF on the secondary coil. What you will typically do is burn up the, tra the um, transformer. The second is the frequency of the primary. Whatever you put in the primary coil is the frequency on the secondary coil, right? Because that changing that frequency is going to be related to the change in flux, which is going to produce the change the EMF, the changing EMF. Okay, so that's the basic physics of the transformer. It turns out that if you have the transformer, the ratio of the voltages across each of the elements of the transformer, the primary voltage compared to the secondary voltage is related to the ratio of the number of turns, right? Because you can make the primary have 100 turns and the secondary have 10 turns, or the other way around. The primary can have 10 turns and the secondary can have 100 turns. What that means at the end of the day is that the voltage across the secondary is related to the voltage across the primary by the ratio of the number of turns. And so this essentially means is the voltage can be raised or lowered depending on the ratio of those terms. And so we can step up the voltage, we can go from 10 to 20, or we can step it down, we can go from 10 to 5. Right, and we do that by controlling the number of turns. Okay, so we have the power delivered needs to be equal to power dissipated. So this is just a standard thing. If we put in some power on the primary side, we have to dissipate that same power on the secondary side. And what that means when we apply that equation, we have the current through the primary coil times the voltage across the primary coil has to equal the current through the secondary coil times the voltage across the secondary coil. Essentially what that means is the current through the secondary coil is related to the current through the primary coil times some ratio of the number of turns, right? This is the different ratio, the opposite ratio for the voltage, but the point is is that if the voltage of the secondary or they're related and so ultimately what that means is if you increase the voltage on the secondary voltage, you have a step-up transformer, then the current through the secondary is going to be lower. Or if you lower the voltage, you have a step-down transformer, then the current through the secondary will be higher. Right? That's to keep the power the same. If you're going to increase the voltage, then you've got to decrease the current. Or if you decrease the voltage, you're going to have to increase the current. So you can define sort of an impedance of the primary, right? Really, it's this loop or this coil that normally is going to be just wire and isn't going to sort of have a lot of impedance on its own, but it, what the impedance is depends upon what load you put on there. So we can define sort of the impedance of the primary and just use Ohm's law and say that it's the voltage across the primary divided by the current through the primary, and we can do the same thing for the secondary. The impedance of the secondary coil is the voltage across the secondary coil divided by the current through the secondary coil. And by then, using our relationship that we developed above, we can find a relationship between the impedance of the primary and the impedance of the secondary. Right? It turns out it's just related to the ratio of the loop of the coils squared. So what we'll see what that means in a minute, but the, these are the basic facts about a transformer. The voltages of the primary and secondary are related, the currents are related, and the impedances are related.
by the in some function of the ratio of the terms. So let's apply Kirchhoff's loop rule to the the transformer circuit with the transformer. So we hook up an input signal, a signal generator, to the primary side. We hook some load. It could be a resistor, capacitor, whatever, on the secondary side. Well, the first thing you want to see is that there are two loops. There's one on the left that consists of a signal generator attached to the primary coils, and on the right there's the primary or the secondary coils attached to the load impedance. So for each of those two loops, we can apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. So on the left side, that essentially tells us the voltage of the signal generator equals the voltage across the primary. And on the right side, it tells us the voltage across the secondary is equal to the voltage across the load. So what are we trying to do? We're typically trying to find, hey, what's the current through the primary or what's the current through the secondary so I can find what are the voltages? What's the voltage across the load? So we can apply essentially Ohm's law to the primary. We get the voltage of the signal generator is equal to the current through the primary times the impedance of the primary. But what is the impedance of the primary? Well, that depends on the ratio of the turns. That depends upon what's the load on the other side. So let's go look on this the secondary coil equation and kind of see if we can figure out well what's the impedance of the secondary coil well we can essentially apply Ohm's law to that and essentially we find out at the end that the impedance of the secondary is equal to the impedance of the load we can from our previous slide we know how the impedance of the primary is related to the impedance of the secondary which in this case is equal to the impedance of the load and so we can substitute that into our equation for the left side or the primary side of the transformer. And essentially we get that the signal generator voltage is equal to the primary current times the ratio of the number of turns or the number of coils times the impedance of the secondary. We can solve for the current through the primary right so it's just some function of what's on the secondary what's the signal generator voltage and the ratio of the coils and the importance here is once we have the primary we know how to find everything else we can find what's the current through the secondary we can find what's the voltage across the primary we can find what's the voltage across the secondary and so we can essentially solve the problem okay so that's the basic idea let's look at one more idea but now what happens if we have a more complicated circuit? We have on the primary side another resistor. Now how does that work? Well, essentially, again, there are two loops. We can apply Kirchhoff's loop to each side. Essentially, in this example, the right side, the secondary side, is the same as before. On the primary side, we just have now some of the voltage of signal generator is going to be dropped across impedance 1, and some is going to be dropped across primary. We can apply Ohm's law. Well, we know the impedance of 1, or in principle we know that. We're looking for the current through the primary, which is going to be the same as the current through the impedance of 1. And so again, we need what's the impedance of the primary. Well, we can go through the same steps we did before. A, the impedance of the secondary is just the impedance of the load. We know the relationship from the previous slide of the impedance of the primary to the secondary related by the ratio of terms. We can substitute that in and essentially find that the voltage across the signal generator is the voltage dropped across impedance 1 and the voltage dropped across the primary, written like this. And so we can solve for the primary current, right? Which just depends on things in principle that we know. Impedance 1, impedance of the secondary, which is going to be the load in this case, the ratio of the number of turns, and whatever our input signal is. And again, like before, once we know the current through the primary, then we can find V1, we can find the voltage across the primary, we can find the voltage across the secondary, and we can find the current through the secondary, and then we can go on and find everything we want to know about the load.